brother here. Anyway, sorry for the background noise. Got the server running. Anyway, anybody who's watched my unboxing video of this device knows that it makes a lot of noise, so I'm not going to start it while we're still here. Um, to be able to configure this, you need a console access through the console port. And that is that one there. And that's an RJ45. And you need to adapt it to serial. Now, there's two types of cables you can get. Uh, there's one like this that terminates in a 9 pin serial. Or you can get one that has an adapter going directly to USB, but that hasn't come yet. I've ordered one, but, it, but it's still in demand. So I'm going to use a um, this pre-built adapter cable, and, and this, ha of course, they have both of these has electronics in it, so it's not just a cable. So this has um, serial adapter to USB. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two together like that. I'm going to plug this into the console and then this is going to go into my the other end of this is going to end up in my Raspberry Pi oh. protection I might have the camera in the wrong attitude so I'm not showing what I'm doing but I'm plugging the um, USB into Oh, it's <laughs> I didn't want to go in, but anyway, now it's in. So, this should now theoretically be active because the Raspberry Pi should contain the drivers for the serial port. Oh, for the serial. Yeah, the serial cable. And then, um, there's another light-hearted, um, fun thing I'm going to plug this into the server. So the server also has a serial port, so I'm going to um, uh, also plug in the serial port for the server into the Raspberry Pi. And you can ask why. Well, because I can. So. <laughs> I want to see what, what, um, what kind of terminal one gets when one connects to the server. I think it's a, an extension of the ILO, so you'll probably get an ILO terminal. So the one can do remote administration and commanding, like shut down the server, start it up. So then I'm just going to plug this in and um, yeah, then it will start and that'll be so much noise we can't probably can't film in here anymore. So next meeting meet up will be in the office. No, I hope that I'd escape the noise, but that's not true. So what we need to do is we. It's actually configured with a password. So what we first need to do is to kick this into boot mode. And that's um on 
the wall spray part, we need to take the cue board. I need to do is I need to cycle the power on the interconnect and then I need to press Ctrl L and hopefully it will go into um, boot mode. So now we've broken into the loader and we take a directory listing. So now we boot into the kickstart. So, switch to the config terminal. So, then we say admin password, and actually they're supposed to give the password after that command. So it, it actually doesn't ask you for it, so I'm going to do that. Um, sadly, I can't film that. So, and we exit the config mode. And we take a directory again, dear. So you actually see the name. And then we're going to load the system. So, so try and load the system. <laughs> Messed up trying to copy the, the file then. Yeah, finally got it. So the boot time was yeah, yeah it's long. But um so now it was possible to log in and, and just to clarify the there's a hard coded local admin name and it's called admin. So that that is the user for which the password was set for. But, um, yeah, not bad. So now we jump back into boot so we can um, actually start configuring the management interface. So first we issue um, config T to get into the config mode. So then we tell we want to configure the management interface. So. Uh, give it the IP address with the um, net mask, and this is a suitable address for me with my subnet. So then we use the no shutdown command to bring up the management interface. Oh, unable to bring up management. Oh, I think I think I'm getting that. I don't actually have a network cable plugged into that interface, so that's probably why it's saying it can't bring it up. Oh, I think I'll go plug in a network cable for it. Yep, plugged in a network cable and it went green and blinking and now this command went through fine. Right, now we exit that level. So, I <laughs> set up the default gateway now. And I wrote the command wrong. This is the, okay, the first command now which has like to combine words with a dash. Oh, well, one learns. Oh, exit the config mode. So, maybe I'll get spelled right now. So. Ah, oh, I'd have to confirm. It needs to be rebooted. Yep. Yeah, there's one comment on uh, Cisco documentation. Uh, they describe pretty much doing the same thing. Um, in different parts of the documentation for a little bit slightly different purposes. So when you want to actually do what I've been doing, then you have to knit together uh, command sequences from different parts. And um, ah, I'm, I'm, uh, sometimes I've noticed that the sequence that they report should happen actually doesn't happen. Not nothing serious. It's more like yeah. So, for example, this sequence here, it, it, um, it wasn't supposed to start um, when I gave the reload command. Then it should have actually waited so that I could actually... It should have ended up in the loader, according to one of the instructions, should have ended up in the loader uh, command line and then yeah, manually load the parts. But it seems to be doing it automatically, so that's okay. And this is also kind of cool that if you look at the model number, it is a um, FI6296UP, but then when they talk about 
like ah, like up here when it's to load the UCS system then it's um 6100 k9 so yeah. i don't know if it's just that the software there isn't a good sync between like base software namings and the actual model number or maybe they just upgraded the model of the device like hardware wise and then they're running the same operating system i don't know well everything seems to work so far as I commented before, any kind of a port error or module error, that, that's because the, um, the, this box has come to me used. And um, they basically what they did is they, they took out all the extra stuff. So they took out all the SFP modules and they ripped out any extra, probably any extra modules that it had for um, extending beyond 48 ports. And um, then it arrived with me, and then what we've done now is that I've re reset the admin password to be able to get gain admin access. I've set up and reconfigured the management console or the management port to a valid IP address for my subnet. And um, then we will see if we get into the UCS manager. Uh, and then we'll start, then we'll have to start cleaning out. Um, yeah, like removing the, uh, yeah, whatever, however one can figure. So it's probably, I would expect lots of virtual networks. It's yeah, probably config configured as part of a um, cluster and <laughs> it's got crap loads of hardware configured. Well, software configured um, hardware that doesn't, the hardware no longer exists. And, and, and as I said, lots of different virtual <laughs> virtual networks but we'll see what we find uh, here's a good example like clustering uh, um, interconnect total <laughs> link failure it's missing all its friends and so, uh, so we're gonna have to get access to that configuration and say that this is the master and the lonely the lonely example so now we're about to log in and uh, let's see if we can get to the UCS management console. So now that we logged in as admin, let's see if we can't um, reset this unit to something useful without losing the firmware files. So first we go to local management. So first we try to start with erasing the configuration. So see if this works. Yep, at least we didn't lose the kickstart. Yeah, still got system, it looks like it. So, this was a little bit unexpected. <laughs> so it looks like it's um, established itself on the management console with a um, DHCP address. But now I've actually got this UI up. So, let's see. Set up. Yep, it seems to start. So let's say initial um, setup. So let's put standalone mode. Let's take fabric A and IP4. So we got some more settings to fill in. So I don't have UCS central management environment. Let's try and leave that blank. Everything else is. Pretty clear, I think. So let's see if I can get away without the missing fields. Well, like the DNS server IP and the default gateway to be the same, which is actually the majority of the <laughs> uh, router configurations in a private home. That's the way it is. But I use the Google DNS server. Let's see if it takes that. Let's see what errors we get now. Ah, didn't like I have a very strong password. Ah, I think it's strong enough. Take away the four strong password. So that part went okay. Okay, so that means that we're here. 
I think the um, management console is working also. So. Oh, I still got a login window. Let's see if it works. So logged in, but when the first time I tried it, it said um, could not connect to server and it threw me out. So I had to log in again. But now it's been stable. It's been standing here now for a while. So let's see what I can do. Well, it's certainly popping with information, that's for sure.